Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Today, I want to take a closer look at NVIDIA. Yesterday, I kind of mentioned some of the my favorite things about the keynote event. Um, today, I actually want to go back to that keynote event and really take a deeper dive on some of the new chips the company announced. And I watched the, sh the keynote a second time just because there was such amount, uh, a great amount of information there that probably wasn't portrayed in the first video and i just want to kind of increase the overall knowledge uh, that we got from that event so let's take a closer look in today's episode i want to thank the motley fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now with that link you get a promotional offer for the subscription service now let's continue with today's episode so like i mentioned at the intro in the episode i did yesterday i kind of really went pretty quickly through a lot of the different solutions NVIDIA announced. Today, I really want to hold it, hone in and take a closer look at the actual silicon and semiconductor solutions that we're getting from NVIDIA, comparing it to previous generations and seeing where the future might lead for these products. So obviously, this new chip and this new architecture is the Blackwell. And we can see just Blackwell versus Hopper here is twice the size, uh, a lot more transistors, a lot more AI performance, a lot more memory on size and thanks to this blackwell architecture we have seen numerous new systems come out so previously nvidia had the dgx h100 and the dgx h100 is eight gpus and two cpus put together the two cpus are usually x86 for nvidia's dgx h100 it was an intel cpu now the new one is the dgx b200 very similar eight Blackwell GPUs and two x86 CPUs. The other kind of pretty cool system that was announced was the GB200 systems. And this is part of their Grace Blackwell 200 super chip. And we're going to talk about that. And to me, that is probably the new bread and butter for NVIDIA. In the previous generation, it was the DGX H100. So many people, and even myself, probably believe that the DGX B200 was going to be the main core product for NVIDIA this generation. But based on the keynote and watching it again, I believe the DGX B200 is a great product. But the core product for this generation is going to be the Grace Blackwell super chip and all the systems that come with it. So what I want to do next is kind of compare the H100 DGX versus the B200 DGX. So these are these systems right here. So on my left, I have the H100 system, which comes with eight times H100 GPUs. Obviously, the DGX B200 comes with eight times Blackwell GPUs. The first kind of overall growth that you see here is GPU memory. So for the H100, it was roughly 640 gigs of memory there, where now it's over 1,000 440 and this overall growth in memory helps with inferencing and for training and for a lot of other things and ai workloads that we're seeing right now in this ai space the company did share performance and if you look at the performance you might be wondering jose performance looks a bit different for the h100 they just talk about fpa now here for the b200 they're talking about training and for inference but they don't how can we compare these so NVIDIA mentions that for them, when they're looking at training, they're looking more at FP8. So for the H100, it was roughly 32 petaflops. Now looking at the B200, it's roughly 72 petaflops, so roughly 2.5 times better for training. And in forms of inferencing, for inference, is actually FP4. And this is something that the H100 wasn't really good at, but here for the B200, it's roughly 144 petaflops or if inference which is i believe almost 7x um better than the h100 so we can see a huge growth in performance right off the bat for the um b200 versus the h100 system power is roughly 14.3 kilowatts here where for the h100 it was 10.2 so even though you do see an increase in system power it's not necessarily the same type of, of increase that you see in performance. So that right off the bat increases that performance to power ratio. Two other things that I wanted to note here is both the H100 and the B200 DGX systems are using Intel CPUs. And again, this could be seen as maybe a weird case for AMD where we can see the CPU for Intel 
is the one of choice for AI workloads that NVIDIA has chosen. I do believe not only because the, the Intel solutions do have some form of AI accelerators, but Intel also has better manufacturing process and more volume production of their CPU. And at the end of the day, NVIDIA needs to sell as much systems as they can possibly have. So just a, a quick look at the CPUs from Intel. Right now on the B200, on the B200, we have the 8,570 processor. The 8,570 processor is using Intel's fifth generation Intel Xeon processor, which is the one they did just recently announced. Now, the previous generation was using the fourth generation, which was the Sapphire Rapid. So, previous H100 was using Sapphire Rapids. The new B200 is using the Emerald Rapids. So, this can obviously be seen as a nice bullish case for Intel one way or another. Maybe some people might see this as a bearish case for AMD, as NVIDIA, the king of AI, does not choose them for their AI CPU of choice. Before we go any further, I just want to say thank you all for the amazing support we are getting in this channel. We're closing in to 40,000 subs. That is insane. So if you haven't and you are enjoying the content, make sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. Finally, if you want to support this channel a little bit more, check out my special offer at fool.com slash Jose. Now back to today's episode. One thing that I did not mention here or do not have a slideshow is outside of the DGX B200 during the keynote, it does seem like Jensen will have a DGX B100 and the B100 will be one that they can kind of pull out and put into and, and kind of hop out with the H100 DGX system. So for maybe some companies that want to upgrade uh this dgx b100 will have a little bit less power but will be a nice boost over the h100 now we're gonna talk about what i think is nvidia's core product for the blackwell architecture and that is the gb200 super chip the gb200 super chip is two blackwell gpus and one Grace CPU. Uh, and we've actually seen the GH200, which is the Grace Hopper uh, super chip. What's very different is the Grace Hopper super chip was only one GPU and one CPU put together. But with the, they're actually able to do two GPUs and one CPU. So a big difference there and obviously a huge boost in overall performance. So now with this super chip, it is the building block for what they have called the D GX GB200 systems. So there's two things. There's the system and then there's the super pod. And this one rack right here is the system. The system is a liquid cool wrap featuring 36 NVIDIA GB200 Grace Blackwell super chip, which includes 36 Grace CPUs and 72 Blackwell GPUs connected as one with NVIDIA and VLink. So one overall rack that is what they call the GB200 system. Now they also have what they call the super pod. The super pod is eight or more GB200 systems put together. So the super pod is eight racks or more put together. And because NVIDIA has created some amazing networking solutions like Quantum Infinite Band and their NV Switch chip, they're able to connect then tens of thousands of super chips together. So here we can kind of see one of those systems. So the DGX GB200 system is roughly 1.4 exaflop of inference solution. And Jensen during the keynote mentions that there are less than a handful of supercomputers out right now with exaflop capacity. So uh, Jensen has mentioned that, hey, look, in this one server, you're getting some of the powers that some of the supercomputers out in the world right now don't even have, or only a handful of supercomputers have. So we can see a huge boost here. And this is why I say that the GB200 is going to be NVIDIA's core product. What's pretty interesting about the GB200 product is this is going to be a turnkey architecture. Each is built, cable, and tested in the factory to dramatically speed the deployment at customer data centers. And you might be wondering, hey, doesn't this look like what Supermicro does? And yes, yeah, so it does seem like NVIDIA is 
sharing their secret sauce with a lot of DGX experts and NVIDIA partners certified to support DGX platforms are going to be the ones that are going to build these kind of custom data centers. So the NVIDIA DGX SuperPod are expected to be available later this year from NVIDIA's global partners. So let me know in the comments below real quick, guys. Do you believe that this is another way that NVIDIA is reducing the moat or am I just thinking way too far ahead here? Now, if we take a closer look, the GP200 Super Chips deliver up to 30 times performance increase compared to the NVIDIA H100 Sensor Core GPUs for large language models inferencing workloads. So NVIDIA has, like we saw, they have the their main product of last year which included x86 cpus and their own gpus but now they're saying that hey that's pretty cool but what really works the best is when you use our full system which includes our gpus and our cpus so this is something that maybe amd and intel investors might want to worry about i'm not gonna lie after this event i have actually become even more bullish on how far ahead of the game nvidia is to amd and intel if it, it, it really sometimes even scares me that in the future nvidia might take the full market from a lot of these other players so nvidia is definitely definitely impressing me even though maybe not many people enjoy the keynote as as much as i did here is another kind of showcase of the overall um gp200 system so here Jensen mentioned that to train a GPT model with rough, with roughly 1.8 trillion uh, parameters, I believe, it would take 90 days. And it would use roughly 8,000 Hopper GPUs and consume roughly 15 megawatt of power. And these 8,000 GPUs, I think, were most likely, um, again, with the, DG, with the DGX system using the x86 platform. Now, if you take a closer look at the Blackwell GP200, instead of using 8,000 GPUs, you're actually only needing 2,000 GPUs and only 4 megawatts of power. So a fourth of the power. And here, obviously, you're using less real estate. And this is where NVIDIA continues to showcase that, hey, look, at the end of the day, it's not the price at the actual chip. If you're saving more money on cabling, if you're saving more money on IT, on just overall testing the systems, on making sure the system is not down, on an energy efficiency, you're going to save more money using our chips than anything else in the world. And that's not to kind of kick rocks to the hopper. The hopper is such an amazing system, but it just showcases how much of a strong system the GB200 is right now. So again, this is going to be the core product for them. And this, in my opinion, is going to have some huge, huge growth revenue segments for the company in the future. Now, those are all the main points I wanted to take a closer look at today. Hopefully, we really got to understand what NVIDIA showcased in this keynote and kind of really understand and compared it to the previous generations as well. What I'm going to be doing throughout the next few days is my next video is most likely going to be on the Q&A session um, that NVIDIA did for, for the for the financial world uh and probably do a nice 10 to 15 video, minute video there so make sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button now thank you guys see you and catch you guys next time